Today's March 25th, 2015. With me is John Schaefer, a uh, member of the Union Fire Company. And just to verify, we do have your permission to record today? Yes, we have my permission. Okay. Um, your current age? 61. Okay. And where did you or where do you work? Or I uh, worked previously at the uh, 911 Center in Cumberland County. I was manager for 40 years, 228 days. It wasn't counting, but that's what it is. Started in 1974. Okay. I'm and, retired now. Okay. Great. And you're a member of the Union Fire Company? Yes. When did you join? I joined there in uh, July 13th of 1976, but I previously belonged to the Cumberland Fire Company from July of 1970 until then, actually until April, then from April till July, I wasn't a member anywhere. Um, I was, however, hired at the Union uh, late June, early July. They needed drivers over July 4th, so I was actually hired to drive a weekend prior to being an actual member. Okay. Uh, the president, Lee Brocker, went to the borough and asked how could I drive without being a member of anywhere, and they said just hiring. Okay. So I was officially was just considered an employee for insurance purposes. Okay. But that was a start for the union. Okay. And you're originally from Carlisle? Yes. Okay. And you joined the Cumberland. What made you get interested in the fire company? Well, I guess living close to it, my, we always chased the fires. My dad belonged there, was active in the 40s prior to the war. He wasn't active after that due to the fact of moving to Newville and whatever. And my grandfather was active, and they always spoke of our relatives. Mike Smith was our, my, my great-great-uncle was a the driver there, and they always talked about Uncle Mike. And uh, just being in the neighborhood and the neatness of the thing and the people, you knew everybody was a neighborhood mm -hmm. thing, and the interest was there as far as uh, being neat and something cool to do. Okay. Wasn't so much putting fires out, but you had to join the firehouse. So that's what led me to the firehouse. It was actually at, uh, when the, the um, fire at the uh, bowling alley at Carnival Valley Savings Alone occurred, that we went to that, uh, went there in the afternoon after it was over, and my dad helped them roll hose, and we, he actually drove the old one truck back to bring the hose back, and I got my application that day and signed in, me and Butch Fitzpatrick uh, joined at the same time. It was in July, whatever the date was, in 1970. Okay, and Butch Fitzpatrick was George? That's George Jr. George Jr., okay. Yes. Okay. okay, and your father had gotten active again by that point? Or? He became active again, and... Uh, um, with him being a pretty competent driver for a pen drive, truck driving and so forth, uh, they talked him into becoming qualified in the apparatus, so he started driving shortly thereafter and drove weekends. Mm -hmm. And uh, we both were a very active uh, father and son deal for several years until 1976. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you live at the firehouse? No. I Well, you could say that, but I didn't. Mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time there. Uh, I... Um, was very active in going to auto racing, and so was my dad. When I joined the firehouse, we sort of shifted to the firehouse. So I was at the firehouse every Saturday, Sunday, every every spare moment. Now, I didn't shortchange my school, I don't think, as far as my grades, but I definitely was there and, and, and lived there as far as my heart. Okay. Didn't sleep there other than maybe weekends. Okay. And did you hold any offices at the fire company, at the Cumberland? I was a uh, chief hose director in 1971, um, which was similar to being a captain now. Um, that was in 71, didn't want it, and you'll hear this more often in the conversation, I'm sure, pushed in by uh, the older members. Uh, I guess they saw that my interest, and in, I was always asking questions, and it seemed like it was into the whole bit of this firefight thing, and they, they pushed me into it, and that was in 1971. Bill Oldwood was uh, foreman or chief at the time. Okay. Was Bill one of your mentors? or? Yeah, I looked up to Bill. I thought he was uh, a good leader as far as... Uh, taking control, people respected him. So I, as a kid, we respected him also. He was a little short-fused, and which led to some disagreements with him. He didn't understand people sometimes, so we, I, we always didn't see eye to eye, even as a young kid. Mm -hmm. But I always respected him, and to this day I respect him, and he always knows me, and we go out of the way to say hi and stuff. Okay. And did you, were you a chief at the Cumberland? Yes, I was assistant chief in 1973, and in 1974, I became chief or foreman. Okay. I was chief in 74 and 75. I was chief when the firehouse burnt okay. in June of 74. Okay, okay. Um, what was it like around that firehouse when you were active? Well, it was more of a social club. Most mm -hmm. of the people were there for, it was a neighborhood club. Mm -hmm. uh, you played uh, football out in the playground, and there was a big McAdam playground beside there at Penn School. Uh, we played basketball. Uh, we watched sports, very active sports plays, the Orioles and the Baltimore Colts and the Packers on TV. Uh, we went out and ate pizzas, ran around all over the place. When the fire siren blew, we got in the fire truck and went. Now, my interest went beyond that. 
And as younger members grew, we sort of leaned more towards being into the into the fire service and, and whatever. When I joined there, I would say three quarters of the people there wouldn't even know if the hose was on the fire truck or not. Now they when the siren blew, they all got up and went to the fire call and squirted the water and did everything, same as anybody else did. But uh, it was more of a social place, very uh, popular thing in East End of Carlisle. It was and it was very controlled. It's like going into a club nowadays where the doors were sort of locked. You didn't walk in unless you belonged. They watched everybody come in and out the doors, very controlled. Nowadays, you can walk in these fire houses and it's, you just walk through them other than getting into their safe. You can walk around in them for the most part. Okay. What was it like when you were involved there? And we'll get to the union later. But okay. Just as a comparison, what what kind of things happened during the day? What Any memorable events that you, you can think of? We'd go to the firehouse, sit around, and uh, sort of help, hope we got a fire call. Sue showed up. And we went and went from there. We, like I said, we went outside. We played a lot of touch football out in, outside. Uh, the biggest thing when we went to the firehouse was sitting in front of the firehouse. Uh, there would be nothing to go by there during the daytime, and there was eight, nine, ten people sitting on chairs or benches in front of the Carmel firehouse. And it grew as night came. The, the people just rolled in, and you could have twenty or thirty people sitting out front of the firehouse. All the neighborhood people were on their on their porches. And it was a place where everybody came and sat around, drank a soda talked, whatever, it was It was a social time, and it, it was very enjoyable, it wasn't boring. Okay. So that was really what you enjoyed was kind of the social aspect of right. it? Right, that, that, I mean, things rolled away from, rolled off from that, but that, that brought you there, it was always, the, the bottom line thing was always going to be there, it was a social part. Okay. Other things happened, but. Okay. Uh, you left the Cumberland eventually. Yes. What drove that decision? Well, uh, I got voted out as chief. At the end of 1975, uh, a guy came down from Fayetteville who I respected, George Meister, and uh, there was a clique of people coming around, started coming around 1975. Uh, we'll say, un, not only we use the word unsavory, but in my terms, unsavory, and I come from the east end of town. Mm -hmm. And uh, they come in, and, and I don't know what their reasoning was, but they sure wanted George Meister as a foreman. And I wasn't against him because I was only 21 years old. I really didn't want, I got pushed into that by a group of people in 1974. I, I mean, I liked the position, but I, I still didn't want to stress, and I'd rather be relaxed. Mm -hmm. Well, I was sort of willing to assume a lesser position, but they wanted no parts of me, nothing of me. Mm -hmm. But I didn't turn my back on the fire company. I got voted out as far as the officer, and uh, I still stayed around. Uh, I remember going to Lewistown in 1976, went up in February. Uh, you were involved, it was uh, Meister got it through uh, Granning or whoever. Uh, we went up there and very active in that, and then uh, all of a sudden in April there was an event at the firehouse. Uh, Dick Smith was driving, uh, a member came in, a little under the weather. There was some drinking went on at this firehouse. There was a bar in the back. Uh, didn't drive the firehouse, but there was a bar in the firehouse up until probably '73. I think the bar pushed it out. It's probably '73 because I don't think it was there when the firehouse burned. The bar was there, but the the, the beer had left. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, these guys liked to come in and they went out drinking. Some of them were just turning 21. Something that our group really wasn't into was out drinking. And uh, they showed up, the one guy, and he, and he got in a pushing match with, with Dick Smith, ripped some jewelry off of him. And Smitty, who was a cop, left it go, but he reported it to the company and the officers and, and wanted to press charges within the company. And the company blew it off as if nothing happened. That was sort of the turning point. I don't want to say I was ever looking for a reason to leave. But I guarantee you that that was it. There, this this place was going nowhere fast as far as my goals in life. There was uh, Bill Woods resigned the month before, unrelated to this event. But then that in that meeting, it was Dick Smith, uh, Mike Fitzpatrick, Paul Epley, and myself all resigned. Mm -hmm. Now all five of us, counting Bill Woods, were involved in there in some form. Either I was a driver, uh, officers, whatever. They lost some people. Now back in those days, like I said, they had 30 people, so they, they didn't care. But the Union Fire Company gained some good people for a while, some of them for a little bit, and, and me for a long time, and, and, and that's their loss. I mean, that's mm -hmm. their problem. Okay. Is there anything, any, anybody, person that stands out there is unique or memorable at the Kremlin before we switch into the Union? Or? Well, I thought Dick Sugarts was a good guy. I mean, at the end, he was sort of, I guess, playing politics. He wasn't negative with me, but he, and to this day, he still respects me. Uh, I remember when they brought Darren Fox back here a couple of years ago, he was down building mission, and uh, he wanted me to drive it back to the firehouse, which I did. And I thought that was pretty nice of him, and I didn't show up begging for it. He actually said, "We well, want to drive it back," mm -hmm. and I thought that was nice of Dick. I mean, at least I know there's respect there. But Dick, I always enjoyed Dick. I thought he was a, a real good guy at the firehouse. Uh, Fred Kepley, 
When I first joined there, he took us young guys under the wing. Uh, he was a uh, very accomplished wrestler, quit school in ninth grade, very rough family situation, uh, That, but he was the nicest guy, clean living guy, uh, but he took us young guys under the wing and defended us in the firehouse against the older guys because there was a clique of older people there. The, the I don't want to say names, but older people, I'm saying 30s and 40s, they're old compared to what we were then. And us young guys, they were up against us. Fred was our leader. I mean, he led us along, uh, and he he cared about the firehouse. Uh, Fred Mueller, um, good grief, I can't even think of all the, all the people in there. I mean, I, I can name names off of people, but those people were influential as far as people that I always respected because I thought they were all right. Okay. And Allwood, Bill Allwood was fine. Okay. How about it? you then went to the union and, and became involved there? Um, what was the environment like there? The well, time? when I went, I went up to the union firehouse a lot prior to joining uh, for years. I went up there. I got along with our members. Uh, Paul Bram uh, was the driver. Uh, Pete, I wasn't so much, didn't know him well. I mean, he was sort of a night guy. He went up there at nighttime. But Paul Bram, uh, Lee Brocker, Pete Yeager, uh, very friendly people, Lee brought, like I said, Lee once before. Uh, I went up there, they always kid around with me, but they, they respected me, and I was the little wharf rat from down the street, and blah, 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 And but I enjoy going up there, so it wasn't hard for me to go up there and join. And he asked about the environment when I went up there. I felt like they really rolled the red carpet out for me. I didn't expect that, but when I when I joined up there, they asked me to drive. I was given a, a, a little upper tier uh, respect, I thought. I, I sensed resentment. From some of the members when I went up there, once again, I didn't want this. It just happened. It's the way it went down. But uh, the atmosphere up there was much different. More into going to the fires, uh, the, the service to the community. Uh, it was all about firefighting. There was no ambulance. There wasn't any, The bickering wasn't as bad. I'm sure there was some, but I didn't care at that point. I was in cloud nine just being happy being there. But there wasn't as much bickering, and, and the people mostly they were there for a reason. They all had turnout gear. They were going to fight a fire. They weren't there to play cards, to drink, to carry on who we're going to meet tonight and get involved in the politics. Okay. What did, did you enjoy at that firehouse? Was it a different sense of enjoyment then than at the Cumberland? Or? Just the, the sense of the whole firefighting thing. I enjoyed that much more. I going up there and then the sole purpose of anybody being there was was to go go to the fires and fight fire they were very progressive and we tried to be that way down at, at the Cumberland uh two or three years before that they moved a little bit but very progressive uh it was a proud place to belong to a good sense of history um didn't take care of things the way i liked them to as far as the station was run down which that they corrected that by building a new building that which was in process sort of they were in the planning stages the apparatus was not always clean we always had a pride down to Cumberland, us guy, young guys, that the apparatus was supposed to be waxed and clean, ready to go a parade. So I know that when we first went up there, we waxed engine 141 one, one day. We, we waxed that thing, and it, we brought it back pretty nice, but it was beat up mm -hmm. from use. But uh, I, we enjoyed going up there. I mean, I, I enjoyed the whole atmosphere, and everybody welcomed me for the most part. I mean, I had no mm -hmm. conflict with anyone up there at that fire station, really. Okay. None. Okay. And they were a pretty busy station? that time, I think they were running um, maybe 350 calls. I mean, they were the busiest in the county. And they prided themselves on that. And we went out, and uh, there wasn't much to offer when you went out to the other companies as far as what they could provide to their residents. So we were the, the, the golden children coming out to put their fire out in our eyes and uh, hurt us a little later on in life. But uh, we enjoyed going out. There was a pride thing. I mean, we didn't go out there to push them into the ground, but it was what's going to happen next. And we were proud of going out and helping the people. It was a pride thing in how we performed. Okay. Did you get along with the other companies? You kind of alluded that there might have been a little friction? or Well, I got along. I thought with most of them, I'm thinking in when I was chief of the union then, but I didn't have any problem with you know, Kingston or West Pensboro. North Middle was a little standoffish, a little backwards. But I, I was friends with some of their people out there, the Snudders I went to school with. And I... I the neighbors were sort of the backbone of that place a little bit, so I was friends with them. I still am to this day. Um, other than that, we had South Milton wasn't real friendly with us, and Holly was a very competitive company with us, who was very uh, progressive and active. So, but we got along with them. But they 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 were ones you had to really buckle up with as far as going out in the call and doing a good job because they were going to do a good job too. Okay, is there anybody that you remember 
at the union that kind of sticks out in terms of influential? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, in a good way or a bad way? Lee, Lee Brocker was a big supporter of mine, and I, th I thought he had uh, good ideas for the fire company, and he was always there and dedicated. Uh, Charlie Bulls, very, very dedicated, but Charlie was Charlie. I don't know that his uh, performance when I showed up was up to standard. I mean, he, his dedication was beyond reproach, and he got the fires out, but he, was, he wasn't real political. He's one of the thorns mm -hmm. out these other fire companies because he mm -hmm. wasn't real a real people person. Mm -hmm. um, and he was the chief. He was point. the chief. Okay. Um, I, I'd say Brocker okay. was the main guy in there. I mean, it, he, he's the one that drug me up through the, the lines there at the beginning, and, and I respected that, and I thought I earned it. It wasn't, mm -hmm. it wasn't a friendship buddy thing. Okay. And you were chief there as well? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I... In 1978, I was asked by uh, Bob Wise, uh, Lee Brocker, uh, I think Mac McKillop. There was a, several members who were, you know, 15, 20 years older than me, been around there a while. They asked, they wanted me to run. They were a little not. They were not happy with some of the people that were in office, mm -hmm. and uh, they they saw my dedication. I drove there a lot, covered me and covered up. My, my enthusiasm was high. Took care of myself, uh, spoke well, I thought, and I uh, was respectful. And the other companies sort of liked me. So they wanted me to be involved. And, and, and so I, I ran, and I, I don't even remember who we defeated. I don't want to say names who was even in office then. But I ran as assistant chief. Um, very active. Went out to the roll calls, which I thought I was only 24 years old then. Very young in, in comparison to many other fire chiefs. Went out running calls. And, and I got some, I thought, high marks and grades and comments, even from some of our members, about, you know, and I mean, we did things differently back then. It wasn't as big as it is now, but we did it the right way. And the other companies seemed to really like me, too. And Charlie got sick at, the, at about mid-year. Mid I forget what happened to him. He had uh, something from the mountain fire or something else was wrong. He, he couldn't run calls much. So I was sort of the first assistant chief, didn't run calls at all. He was just a paperwork guy. No names mentioned. And, uh, well, I was the only guy running calls. Well, lo and behold, at the end of 1978, uh, I was approached again by several people who were the heavies in the place, decent people, not thugs, heavies as far as being involved and intelligent. They said, well, you run for chief. Oh, I don't know about all this. Mm -hmm. You know, this is going to be a mess because, like, Charlie was revered as the, 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 the king of that place, and I was about to upset the apple cart. Didn't care. Yes, I would cherish being the chief, but I'm not into the stress again, back to the stress again. Well, they talked me into it. So I ran. Well, I think the vote was 31 to 6. There was some ungodly vote that I won with. Well, that caused a lot of tension in the firehouse because apparently there was more than six that didn't like me. Um, I mean, I'm not saying, but there were some people left slowly but surely. The first couple months was pretty rough with people challenging me at calls or being a little standoffish and not listening, and I, I it was... It was a challenge, but I had the right people. The key thing then was the drivers liked you, mm -hmm. whoever the drivers were, because they, to this day, run the firehouse, per se. And the mm -hmm. drivers liked me, so it was tolerable for me to be there because they weren't going to allow anybody to undermine me as a person Well, because they were always there. Mm -hmm. So the, t the tension wasn't really there. I went to fire ground. I, I sensed it. But that it, it, went, it went away after a while. Okay. So you saw a fair amount of change, I guess, in your time in the fire service from when you joined to... To now? Well, even 10 years later when you... Well, you know, this... The turnout gear, uh, safety to the firefighter, uh, some more progressive uh, or, or, or aggressive tactics involved that we, we learned, uh, things like that. I mean, Carlisle was pretty aggressive. But uh, it, through the years, it, it didn't just do it all in one swipe. A lot of it happened in 1974 when we took that fundamentals class that Shoemaker and you guys were involved in, as far as the shoulder loads and turnout gear and some tactics there. But overall, Allwood wasn't the chief of the borough, wasn't that he was pretty good. Like we were laying dual two and a halfs and doing some things prior to that class. And we were doing some things, we had cross lays, they weren't shoulder loads. Uh, but through the years, yes, there was change. Uh, the biggest thing I think in the first 10 years would have been LD, would have been the LDH as far as getting LDH hose. Everything else, uh, nickel dime stuff, it changed a little bit. But okay, okay. What's the funniest thing you remember from being around the union? Anything sticks out in terms of? Funny well, thing? the funniest thing was not the union. Would have been at the Kermel. 
I thought about this because you prompted me in that question. It was one I had to, because after 40 years, I'm trying to really think what is funny. Because I don't think too much it's funny. But the funniest thing that happened was uh, one rainy day, Tuesday or Wednesday afternoon, uh, on a, it was pouring down rain out. It was around 4.30. And uh, we got dispatched to a stove fire on Church Avenue or Dickinson. One, one or two. It was, it was probably... Uh, Dickinson. Anyway, uh, we we pull out of the firehouse because it was us in the union. The engine's four people, and here comes Jerry Steigman running up the street. And like I don't know why we even waited because the engine was you know there was like six in each jump seat. The cable's full. The back end was eight nine people on that. And that goes make some of the stories funnier. Um, anyway, Jerry gets on the back. He has no idea where the call's at. And, of course, back in those days, you always laid in. So we're going up the street, pouring down rain. And I was called like a block and a half in the Union Firehouse, if not further. Joe Bishop standing in front of the Union Firehouse. For some reason, I have no clue why, Dick, the driver, stops and picks up Joe. Well, Jerry thinks we're stopping to hit the hydrant. So Jerry jumps off the engine and wraps the hydrant, which was across the street then in front of the Church of God. We're in the jump seat putting air packs on, and next thing you know, we hear this clinking and clanging and banging and carrying on, and we, I turn, we turned around, and here's like four guys peeled off the side of the engine, hanging on ladders, and there's this hose that's flying through the air because it's horseshoe lows. Mm -hmm. And we're laying and the pouring down rain, which you had to put, you could put wet hose back in. We emptied the hose bed. Mm -hmm. And people were, we're beating on the roof, telling them to stop, 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 and Creedy opens up the window, and Creedy shouts and says, we know where we're going, but no, you don't. We're not going to hose when we get there. And we're it was screaming back and forth. But anyway, that to me was classic. The scene, I, I remember Rick LeBlanc in the back, the guy that sings for uh, Cheap Sneakers. He was on the back of the stuff, beating off his chest, and he's ducking call, couplings. And, but that to me was funny. I don't know if you're looking something funnier, but that was holy cow funny when you yeah. think back on it. That story gets told. Huh? That story gets told repeatedly. It's, it's, it's a classic. Yeah. And uh, pretty interesting. What was? What do you think was the most interesting call you ever went to? Well, they... There's been several. I mean, I don't. I can't explain why they're all interesting, but the big fires, the Palmer Street Apartments fire, I remember it well. Uh, where we're sitting at here, the Strand Theater fire, the fertilizer plant on Spring Garden Street, of course, the firehouse fire, the old race court apartments. All those calls were very interesting when you when you look back on them. I don't, they're never interesting when you're there, but after the fact, what what all went on and the changes, and you compared them to the future calls. I know when the fire across the street here in High Street occurred, I was thinking back at. You know, we put this fire out quicker back in the 70s than what they're doing now. We only had six-inch water mains. Mm -hmm. Just tactics-based. Uh, but but that I, those big calls were always interesting to me, and I still retain them, and I wrote notes down to provide them to you or whoever on those calls in my memories. Those were the apparatus was placed. Strictly historical purposes, the tactics weren't always right, but it, there was some stuff to be learned from them. Okay. How about the worst call you ever on? Sir? When, when the fire house burnt. Okay. Uh, that was very traumatic and, and shocking. It went from... Uh, Shocked, uh, I can't believe this is happening, and let's do something about it, and complete embarrassment. Mm -hmm. I mean, all the emotions were in that whole call. Okay. What happened that night? What, what are your recollections? Well, I was in bed, and uh, I remember we didn't have uh, tone-activated monitors in or anything. You lived off your scanner being loud enough to wake you up or the, the, the roof siren blow. Well, I remember Dick Sugar's coming on there as plain as day, 554 from Engine 140. 554 from Engine 140. Now, Knowing Dick, Dick never got excited. He was the most, I guess the word would be stoic or calm person. He never talked fast. Even on the scene of an incident, he was never in, never over, in overdrive. He was just always calm. Well, I figured there had to be something next to the firehouse, like a house across the streets burning or something. Something had to be close to the firehouse on fire. Well, lo and behold, it was a firehouse. He says they're coming to the firehouse on fire. It's a working fire. Blow the siren before the power goes out. Of course, boom. Oh my God! Yeah, um, it's unbelievable. Jumped in the turnout gear, ran up, the, drove up the street, uh, got up, drove by the firehouse. The engine was up at the corner setting with the red lights on. There was a hose laying from the bay door up to the hydrant. I I, I was in my uh, duster then. Of course, I was chief, and I, I drove by and looked back in the in the bay, and there was like a smoke haze and card little card room, which I guess where the horses were kept back in the old days, and uh, it was like a little watch area. There was a little smoke haze in there. Which I thought, it's on, you know, didn't look bad at that split second. Then when I got, I pulled in and looked, and I could see black smoke blowing out of the, of the kitchen vent fan. It was like thick black smoke because I knew that something was on fire. 
to get out, uh, ran up to the engine because we didn't have turnout gear then. Ran up to the engine, grabbed turnout gear, an air pack. Uh, Dick was there, and I think Jake Baker was helping him hook up the engine. It's complete silence in the borough. I mean, I can't explain it. The only thing I heard was that diesel engine idling at the iron. Ran back down the street. I forget who was there. It was probably J-Mo and maybe Denny Bache, and, and I, he was leased across the street. Mark Bulls, maybe. I forget. Maybe Ralph Smith. Because, uh... Anyway, I ran down. guys that live close to the firehouse. Close, house. ran. J-Mo was in the firehouse. Maybe Kenny Bishop. Um, he was there. I went back to the, the, the fire. Well, we got there, and we, we we unhooked. Before we went down, we unhooked the Y, which we carried a Y with two loads of uh, inch and a half on. It was just wasn't shoulder load down. It was two gazelle loads, two-tiered. So we grabbed a lot off and shoulder, ran it down to hook it on because there was nothing down there but a two and a half. Well, when we got down there, we found here they grabbed the hydro leg. So we had a female coupling. We had two female couplings. So we had. To, I ran back whew, to the hydro to get the double male. Well, there's still no one here. I mean, it was like something. I can't explain it. How they, we're talking a minute. It was moving fast for us. And was, that's when I, I stopped to pull the street box. I pulled the street box. Well, I ran back down with the double male. About that time, the roof siren shorted out, probably from the, the butler somewhere kicked in. I remember running over him and pulling the, the power on the what was right inside the engine room, the power thing. I pulled it down, the siren blew like for 30 seconds. Well, then we got hooked up. The union had come in in the rear. Uh, they they flew the line, apparently, in, in the back door where the, the fire was in the back room. Well, the, the back the front door of that back room was hanging open. It was propped open by a brick. If we had just kicked that brick out, and nobody knew that, and shut that door, the fire would have been contained probably in that room. But when the union hit it, un, unbeknownst, mm -hmm. poof, it, the, the heat had come out through into the engine room. And I remember it was like the whole engine room ignited. It was like a gas fire. I can't explain it, like gas burning up in that tin ceiling. And, and, and the bay doors were up, and, the, and it blew the windows down. And my grandfather was standing there at that, at that point, and he lived around the corner. That blew the bay window doors out, the windows like psh, glass down into the engine room from the heat. We got water at that point, sprayed water. They just freshly painted the firehouse. Uh, Fred Kepley had painted it, was tan and dark brown. And uh, the paint was on fire for quickly, the, like the window frames, curtains were burning, the turnout gear in the back all ignited. Uh, but we hit it with water and it went out because it was just a flash fire. But I mean, continued burning was up in the stairwell, up in there. Uh, of course, we knocked that down, and I don't, I don't remember how anybody thought somebody was upstairs or somebody, I don't remember any communications. Maybe someone said they can't find Hershey, Harry Hershey who died or no, I don't remember that. But I know we went up the stair steps, and I can remember uh, Mark Bulls and I think Harry Herb carrying him out. They, they, Mark definitely had him over his shoulders in that fireman's carry, and they come out, there was two bunk rooms upstairs, and they just built a new one where the ladies' room was, and they carried him out. The smoke air packs on and everything, but I remember him going down the steps like, oh, my God. I mean, it's just unreal. I mean, you got to be kidding me. Somebody was up here. Could they have been saved? I, I don't know. If more people ran up there without proper protective gear on to find him, we'd probably get burnt mm -hmm. with that, the way that place lit up in flames. But no one knew. It was complete confusion. No one was at fault. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just the way it went down. And then the fire went out, and then the, then it was a mess. Mm -hmm. And then the whole process of rebuilding. Yeah, well, we went through uh, that argument. They went, uh, somebody, I think Ralph Smith went and got plans for a firehouse, some you know, basic rudimentary plans for a firehouse down on at Bill Mission Park. Mm -hmm. There was concerns about the flood and money. Well, the borough let you build there. And then they, we went over and looked at a building on High Street, one of the car dealerships down here. If you were the second or third one in the right past, it was Maury Burns or one of them, I forget which building it was. Went down there and looked at that, and there was some thought of building that, re rebuilding that firehouse. Well, then finally it was considered we need to go to the re repair the firehouse. Well, then it was back to meeting with the school because we needed permits to build a stairwell. They had to bring the building up to safe code with fire escapes and concrete stairwells, end up buying a pole. I mean, it was a, that whole process there was was. Re I thought that firehouse was very sharp when it was rebuilt. It wasn't taken care of well though after the fact. I mean, I know when I'm going there in 1984 when they moved out, and I was appalled at after 10 years the condition of that place inside. I mean, it was it was well used and nothing done to it. How long did you stay active in the fire service? 
Well, I, when I went to the Union in 1976, I started driving. I actually drove at 40 in 1974. I drove my first fire call uh, down to Box 27. When, when it was Duke, Dick had to go down to Bowling Springs or somewhere for an appointment, and he asked me to drive for him for about an hour. And Box 27 was my first fire call I ever drove on. I was down to Box 27. It was around 1 o'clock in the afternoon. It was in June of 1974. Um, anyway, I was active from 70 until 2012, so mm -hmm. 42 years. The last year or two, I was spotty driving. I didn't do any shifts, but I was very active from at the Union from 2006 to 2009 as far as driving. Drove a call every year. Some years, 60, 70, 80 calls I drove. In 2006, I was third or fourth on uh, total calls ran, period. Uh, covered up, always close by, could leave work from the 911 centers I worked at in the administrative area. And being close to Frouse, in my first year's belonging there, I was, I, I would get up and went to Frouse a lot. Why did you become inactive? What made you get out of it? I burned out. Felt like I was being used, not in a negative way. I mean, I, I just felt like, you know, it's time for somebody else to step up. A lot of people were saying to me, uh, it's about time for you to step up and take these offices. It's like, are you kidding me? I mean, I, I haven't been, but I've been there way too long to say, now I'm going to start over again. You know, it's time for other people to, to maintain or more people step up. I don't know who that's going to be down the road. I hope they have someone. I truly hope they do. But uh, I, I just felt burnt out, big thing. I got a motorcycle. Uh, I'd say just plain old burnout because I, when I, I retired, I might have been the first person ever to retire from the fire, mm -hmm. volunteer fire service. I put a retirement letter in. Mm -hmm. A lot of people kid me. How do you retire from volunteers? Well, I wanted to make it official. And it wasn't anything for me to get some limelight, but it was like a lot of people just disappear. Mm -hmm. What happened to Joe? What happened to Jimmy? They don't say stop coming around. Mm -hmm. Were they mad? What's wrong? Or they were mad and left. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't want that to be the case. I, I stated in there, you know, I was, I'm done. Take me off the driver's list. Do this and that. Thanked everybody. Still be around. There's no hard. It was just a, it was a going away. Of, uh, the best I could figure about going away, right? Okay. So you still keep in touch with the fire company? Yes. I was just there a little bit ago. I mean, I, I, I can't get my interest back up. I thought when I retired, I would be still early in retirement. I thought I'd be bored to death and want to go back. Uh, but that itch hasn't even bothered me. Even the fact that I'm on this new on the committee for a new engine, which I went to the meeting. And I told him, I said, you invite me to the fight, you don't know what you're going to hear. So don't invite me if you don't want to hear the fight. <laughs> well, I went to the meeting, and I spoke up. And I don't know how well I was received at some issues. And then again, that's their fire truck down. They're fighting fire a little differently, maybe. Not so much, but I had some ideas. And um, I'll, I'll probably go to the next meeting. But it, it, that's, you know, we'll see. Okay. I'm not there for getting my own way, but if I see I'm wasting my time or it's, a two-man show, and I understand what's going on. That's their business. I'll, I'll get out of it. I'm not going to go there for the sake of hanging out. Okay. What do you see for the future of the, the fire service in Carlisle based on your experience? Well, I, hate to say, I think they're in trouble, uh, only for the fact that I don't see people getting active and being involved. And I, I don't, and that's a, I say that as a question, it's an answer, but you judge people by their answers, and I don't have an answer. Mm -hmm. So I can't sit here and say how you can fix it. I should have an answer when I say that. I think they're in trouble. But I don't know what the, the answer is. The, um, Do they not have as mem many members today? As well, obviously they don't. I mean, they, they good grief. They, they can't get enough people out of all those stations now. They used to get out of one. I mean, back in the old days, the friendship in Cumberland, I thought, had the most people. They always got 20 and 30 guys. Now, the Union got 20 at night, 10 during the day, and, and the Goodwill and the Empire were a little hard up for help. Uh, nowadays, I mean, you have a fire that we used to handle with two companies, and, and they end up calling in three alarms, which I understand. And people, but, you know, and, there, and there's more safety involved. You know, you, know, you can work 20 minutes and you're wore out. And you're, well, we went four hours when we were kids. Maybe we were killing ourselves. We don't know, but... The whole thing's a lot different, but I, there's no there's there's no manpower. Uh, they have and, they, and there's no reason for it as far as money because they have better support nowadays financially from the municipalities. It could it could be better. I'm not saying for somebody for the municipalities. I want to read this, but you could do a better job. But uh, it's it's adequate enough that they shouldn't be burdened with with what we were burdened with with money. Um, but I think it's it's sort of going. It's it's bleak. I mean, I, I, there's people at the union now, I mean, young guys, but I don't know that they're going to be there in five years or two years or three years. All it takes is a, 
uh, a new hobby, a girlfriend, or a, a job. That kind of stuff takes people away. Back in our day, that kind of stuff, for the most part, didn't affect us. Now, we kept things, I hope, in balance. We, some of us turned out all right. But we still stayed involved and kept things, our family and all that stuff, in balance. But we'll see. Okay. Anything else that we should note or you think is important that we record that somebody 50 years or 100 years from now would be interested in? Ah, uh, you should have told me that question first <laughs> to think about that one. Not, not really. I mean, I, I'd be saying I was bragging about myself mm -hmm. other than, you know, back in the day we cared a lot about the fire company. It wasn't about us. And uh, we always cared about how we performed. We went out. We wanted the people to say the union or whoever did a good job. And uh, that was not us going out saying that so-and-so and this guy did a good job, whatever. But you know, mis some people were, were misinterpreted when they were in the fire service and what their goals were. And I always wanted to say that mine was always uh, to make the fire company look good. Sometimes it was a competitive edge that rubbed the other fire companies the wrong way. That's too bad. Probably good for the people who needed help because, you know, a little competition, as long as we weren't cutting corners to help you, it made things go a little better. If we made the other fire company work harder or, or become better, we... Uh, Good for them because we always listen to the other, watch the other fire companies. Didn't want to make their mistakes. If they did something right, we tried to use it or adapt it. Uh, you always wanted to move forward. We weren't. We never sat still. I'll say that for the Union Fire Company. I don't think we ever sat still. You know, they they always looked forward and, and uh, moved on. Okay, great. Anything else? That's it. I okay. guess. Thanks. Appreciate it.